Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleague, my name is Christophe Dupont. I am a pediatric GI. I've been working at Paris Descartes University. I'm now an emeritus professor, and I've been working on cosmic AG for numerous years at the moment. We are going to talk about cosmic allergy, about the clinical symptoms, and mainly about the treatments of this condition. The first thing to think about when we talk about uh, cow's milk allergy is uh, where does it come from? We don't know exactly where it comes from, but we know more about that. And especially we know more because we know the role of skin. And we are just going to talk a little bit about the role of skin in the onset of cow's milk allergy. You have got here the atopic march, something that everybody knows. You've got the kinetics of food allergy and also the kinetics of eczema that you can see here. And when you analyze these kinetics, you see that the development of food allergy and the development of eczema uh, is exactly at the same age during the first months of life, which means that probably there is some kind of relationship between the development of food allergy and the development of the skin disorder, which is eczema. To have uh, allergy, you need to have first sensitization. If you have sensitization, you need to have also allergen exposure. So in food allergy and in milk allergy, very often the disease comes from early eczema. Eczema is characterized at the beginning by a skin defect because of a malfunctioning of filigree. Filigree is a protein which is interspersed between the different cells of uh, the dermis and of uh, the epidermis, as you will see. And uh, this is one of the way why the allergen might trigger sensitization. Let's look at the exact mechanism. Here you've got a healthy skin and you've got a good skin barrier. Here you've got the skeratinocytes, here you've got the cells of the dermis, and here an antigen presenting cells. When the allergen are outside of the skin, when the skin is healthy, there is no penetration of the allergen inside the skin, so no presentation to the antigen presenting cells. When there is a defect in the skin because of malfunctioning filigree, this protein which is between the different cells, the skin is kind of leaky, permeable, so that uh, the antigens or the allergens are able to cross the skin to go to the antigen presenting cells and then to trigger sensitization. So you see that at the beginning, with a normal skin, you do not have any sensitization. And when the skin is not functioning properly, then you get sensitization. So when you analyze uh, the allergic march, you see that, uh, as was uh, designed by Thomas Bieber in a publication in 2012, you see that at the beginning you've got a disorder of the skin, infantile eczema. Because of this uh, disorder of the skin, you've got sensitization to allergen, so that uh, eczema transformed into IgE-associated atopic dermatitis. And then when the child grows up, the disorder of the skin, the malfunctioning of the filigree disappears because of compensation mechanism, but the sensitization persists. So basically, the disorder of the skin disappears, but the sensitization persists, for example, to milk. So that when the child has been sensitized to milk because of the skin malfunctioning, when the uh, the skin is re-exposed to the allergen to milk, then you see the symptoms reappearing. So that you've got uh, this situation where, for example, this child had eczema at the beginning, was sensitized to milk, then had a skin disorder, atopic dermatitis related to the ingestion of milk. And when the child was put on the elimination diet, then you see a complete disappearance of the symptoms on the skin. So you see quite a complex phenomenon with a disorder of the skin, then sensitization, and then again a problem with the skin because of this sensitization. 
So this is what occurs when the skin is malfunctioning, but it is not the only way by which uh, a child becomes sensitized to milk. Something has got to do probably with reflux, gastroesophageal reflux. You see, when you analyze uh, the history of a child with cow's milk allergy, you see that in a very frequent proportion of children, 40% actually of children have got gastroesophageal reflux. And this uh, high frequency of gastroesophageal reflux probably means that there is some kind of relationship in the onset of cow's milk allergy and the presence of a diseased esophagus during this gastroesophageal reflux. And this is uh, probably something which appears also during a disease which is uh, more and more frequent at the moment, eosinophilic esophagitis. Actually, this disorder of the skin, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, is frequently related to gastroesophageal reflux and to early gastroesophageal reflux. When we talk about allergy and food allergy, we need to talk about terms. Very often people are talking about intolerance, but now everybody agrees on the fact that when there is an immune mechanism at the origin of a, a phenomenon, a symptoms related to an allergen, then we do not talk about intolerance, but we talk about allergy. The point is that sometimes you've got IgE, so this becomes a food Ig. I'm sorry, this very often you've got the presence of IgE, and in this kind of situation, you've got what we call Ig-mediated food allergy, and in the case of cow's milk allergy, it is Ig-mediated cow's milk allergy, and sometimes you've got non-Ig-mediated cow's milk allergy, and this kind of situation, you do not find in the IgE, but still it is not intolerance, it is allergy. So when you talk about the different types of food allergy, you talk about Ig-mediated food allergy, you talk about non-Ig-mediated food allergy, and you talk also of this disorder, eosinophilic disorders, eosinophilic esophagitis, a disorder which is a a, a disorder related partly to IgA mediated mechanism and partly to non IgA mediated mechanism, which means that it is something quite complex and sometimes a little bit difficult to analyze. When you look at the different uh, syndrome that can be related to food allergen, you see differences. Again, we've got Ig mediated. Uh, symptoms, we've got non ig mediated symptoms. And when you talk about peanuts, for example, or tree nuts or kiwi fruit or sesame, you see diseases that are always Ig mediated. But when you talk about staple foods like, for example, milk, egg, wig, or soy, you see that they are able to trigger Ig mediated symptoms and non Ig mediated symptoms. So that with milk, you've got any kind of symptoms, Ig mediated and non Ig mediated. So it becomes a little bit complicated to analyze because you've got really many different diseases that can be related to cardiac allergy. What are these uh, different disorders? You've got the Ig mediated symptoms, anaphylaxis, angioedema, urticaria, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, rhinitis, asthma. You've got the non-Ig mediated milk allergy symptoms. These are the symptoms that are very frequent in infants at the beginning of life. These are the symptoms that are seen by pediatricians when they take care of children aged six, eight months of age. You've got colleagues, you've got reflux, you've got uh, abdominal pain, you've got irritability, you've got constipation, you've got diarrhea you've got failure to thrive. All these disorders are mainly non-Ig mediated so that uh, diagnosing them is sometimes quite complicated. You've got also some other types of non-Ig mediated milk allergy symptoms, 
atopic dermatitis, you've got asthma, ENT disorders. You've got something which is very frequent, what we call FPIs, food protein induced enterocolitis syndrome. It is a non IgD mediated uh, food allergy. It can be severe and it can lead to shock. Actually, when the child has got this FPIs to milk, what you see is that when there is a, a regular consumption of milk, you've got mild to moderate symptoms which are chronic, such as, for example, diarrhea, failure to thrive. If the child stops milk, then the symptom disappears. But if the child takes milk again, then you've got a very severe symptom in terms of dehydration, vomiting, and this can lead to shock. And when you see that, you think that it might be something which is an anaphylactic shock. It resembles because of the shock, but it is not something which is related to an anaphylactic reaction. It is related to dehydration. So that it is very important to be recognized because again, it may mimic some uh, anaphylactic reaction, but there is no Ig, so that uh, you may be confused by the absence of specific Ig and seal the severity of the symptom. You've got also in uh, during a uh, cas milk allergy this uh, new disorder which appeared 20 or 30 years ago, eosinophilic esophagitis (EOE). What is it? It is a symptom that you can see using endoscopy. During endoscopy, what you see is uh, the presence of very specific lesions, and these lesions are related to the infiltration of the mucosa with eosinophils. And uh, this disorder, which is basically some kind of eczema of the esophagus, is uh, manifested by clinical symptoms that are at the beginning of life, feeding difficulties, then in older children, vomiting, gastroesophageal reflux, then in older children, nine to 10 years of age, abdominal pain. And you see here, later on, is also in adult patients, dysphagia and food infection. This uh, eosinophilic esophagitis is more and more frequent. Basically, if we want to summarize the problem of EOE, we can say that uh, it is manifested by a severe reflux that it can, may appear during the early months of life and that cosmic allergy is involved in this disease in at least 75% uh, of cases. So it is important to detect cosmic allergy because of all these symptoms. And we need thus to know exactly which, simple, which symptoms have to be analyzed and considered as potentially related to cosmic allergy. If we want to do that, it is probably very important to refer to a paper that has been published in 2019 by a working party involving many people, very elegant people working in different parts of the world. And they have uh, described very precisely the symptoms of cow's milk allergy. You can see on this slide all the symptoms in uh, these different tables. It's difficult to read so that we're going to sample this table and this table in the next slide. You can see here in, the in this slide, the symptoms that are non-IG mediated and here are the symptoms that are IgE mediated. And you can read here on this uh, yellow uh, box, uh, the symptoms that may reveal cow's milk allergy. And these are persistent irritability, colic, these are also vomiting, reflux, gastroesophageal reflux, food refusal or aversion, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal discomfort, or even the blood in the stools. And you can see that you may have also skin symptoms, pruritus, very frequent, erythema, rashes, and atopic dermatitis. The symptoms related to Ig mediated cow's milk allergy are more Come, uh, more, uh, we're more used to them, I would say. Uh, again, we've got the problem of the skin, pruritus, erythema, atopic dermatitis. We've got the, 
the acute disorder of gastrointestinal tract, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain. And we've got also respiratory symptoms, including rhinitis, which is, for me, quite a frequent symptom of cow's milk allergy. Important to say that uh, during cow's milk allergy, we may have an altered growth. This alteration of growth appears early, and it may persist at the age of adults. You have here a personal diagram on which I monitored uh, the growth of a child with cow's milk allergy, you see that the weight gain is slowing down. And when the child is put on the elimination diet, you see that the child goes back, the weight curve goes back to normal. You can see here the height gain, and you see that the height gain decreases progressively, but a little bit later as compared to the weight gain. Important to say that uh, cow's milk allergy may impact uh, the final height of children. We've got here a publication that was done on more than 5,000 children aged 2 to 70 years. And there was a comparison between children who were non-allergic to milk and children who were allergic to milk. Here you've got the weight for age, here the height for age, and here the BMI. And what you see is that when you analyze children with who have been allergic to milk, you see that their weight for age is lower than in children who were not allergic to milk. You see that the height for age is lower in children allergic to milk than in children non-allergic to milk. And you see that the population refers to children aged 2 to 17 years, which means that the impaction of cow's milk allergy on height is very important. So it is very important to go to rapidly to a diagnosis of this condition. If uh, cow's milk allergy is Ig mediated, it's kind of simple. You do the skin prick test and you analyze the positivity of the skin prick test. Actually, the diameter of the wheel following a small puncture inside a small drop of milk. If the diameter is above seven millimeter, then you've got allergy to milk. If it is less than three millimeters, usually it's what we call sensitization. And between them, between these two values, you've got uh, what we can call a gray zone in which you do not know exactly if the child is or not allergic to milk. So you can go to the measurement if the blood of the specific IgE to milk. And here you've got a table which I published a few years ago, analyzing the different publications uh, relating to the threshold value that you can have for specific IgE or even for the wheel of skin prick test in order to try to decipher uh, the uh, to analyze precisely uh, the threshold above which you are kind of sure that the child is allergic to milk. You see that it is not that simple because uh, values vary considerably actually according to authors and according also to the age of the child. So we can refer to these values, but basically we see that there is a very high variability in these different measurements. If the child has not any IgE mediated disorder, you cannot do any skin prick test, you cannot measure the specific IgE. The only thing you can do is ATP patch test. The ATP patch test is a simple technique but which takes some time you put the allergen on a small chamber what we call a thin chamber in aluminium you apply that on the skin for two days then you remove it then you wait a little bit to in order to uh, let the skin uh, the, the, the different phenomenon of irritability of the skin disappear and then you do the reading it's much more convenient to do the reading actually uh, 24 hours following removal of the patch. And if you've got this uh, redness or these uh, lesions, which are quite close of to some kind of local eczema, then you've got the positivity of the ATP patch test. And it is diagnosis of non-IG-mediated cow's milk allergy. 
Now let's go to the feeding of an infant or a child with cow's milk allergy. We are going to talk about formulas because uh, these are very important in order to avoid any nutritional deficiency in uh, this period of uh, development of the child. We are going to talk about uh, elimination diet and we're going to talk about baked milk because it is very important now to know when a child is allergic to milk if he is able to tolerate baked milk or not. So let's talk first about the formula that can be used when a child is allergic to milk. When uh, we uh, use a formula to feed a child with cow's milk allergy, we use a formula that has been designed by a company and the company is obliged to uh, respect the rules that have been established by the European Union so that uh, the composition of the formula in terms of sugars or fat or proteins is actually not determined, not determined by uh, the company, but uh, by the European Union. So you may be confident that the formula is appropriate. The point is that uh, what kind of protein are you going to use to manufacture this formula? And uh, uh, the companies may use different uh, protein sources and we are going to talk about these protein sources. When the child is allergic to milk, you cannot use a formula in which you've got milk intact protein because the child is allergic to milk protein. So you need to use uh, other different sources of protein. Okay. Most of the time we use what we call extensive hydrolysate of cow's milk. In this hydrolysate, we use uh, formulas which has been manufactured manufactured with uh, small peptides coming from milk proteins. These milk proteins have been uh, transformed. They have been cut in piece, into pieces. They have been heated so that uh, the small remnants are usually not allergenic and usually are perfectly adapted to the feeding of children with cow's milk allergy. But still, there are some remnants of milk, and in very allergic children, these formulas are not adapted to the feeding of children with cow's milk allergy. This is the reason why now we've got something a little bit different. We've got the amino acid-based formula. In these formulas, you do not have any milk remnants. You have only amino acids. And more recently, we've got also some formulas which have been designed and manufactured with a protein part which is not coming from milk and not coming from amino acid but coming from rice. These are the hydrolyzed rice formulas and we use them in France and they are being used at the moment increasingly in different countries. If you want to do the diet appropriately, you need to use these formulas. You need also to eliminate any form of uh, milk or dairy product in the diet of the child. You have got here the picture of the product that you need to eliminate. For example, raw milk, butter, cheese, yogurt, etc., etc. And at the beginning also, you need to avoid any biscuits or any um, this type of cooked food containing milk. But basically, when the child grows up, it is important to know if the child allergic to milk is able to tolerate these biscuits containing milk. Actually, there was a publication a little bit than more, more than 10 years ago by Anna Novak Beskrin. She analyzed the population of children with cow's milk allergy, 100 children. She challenged them with uh, biscuits, and she saw that uh, in 25% of them, uh, there was a, a reaction to these biscuits. But the, in the other children, actually in two thirds of these children, there was a good tolerance of these biscuits. So that actually in children with cow's milk allergy, it is when the child grows up possible to, the, to use this baked milk containing biscuits and this is very important because it helps a lot in deciding the diet of these children for whom it is sometimes 
very difficult to find an adapted diet, something that they like, something with which they can grow up absolutely normally. When the child grows up, he may grow out of uh, cow's milk allergy. The evolution is different according to the fact that the allergy is non-IG mediated or IG mediated. When the child is non-IG mediated, most of the time the child grows out of this disorder at age nine months, one year, so that uh, it is uh, possible to go back to a normal day diet at this age, and usually because of the absence of the risk of any anaphylactic shock, uh, we can do that at home. When the child has got an Ig mediated cosmic allergy, then the disorder lasts until one year, one year and a half, sometimes two or three years. It depends according to the children. It is possible to monitor the decrease of this disorder uh, by monitoring the blood specific Ig to milk and by doing regularly skin prick tests. And when it is decided to go back to a normal uh, diet, very often it is preferable to go to the hospital so that the reintroduction of milk or dairy product is done under medical surveillance. We've got a big progress which was made recently uh, this big progress is uh, what we can call uh, the milk ladder. The milk ladder is a description of the different uh, products containing milk or dairy products that can be used during this process of reintroduction of milk into the diet of the children. You see that when you want to reintroduce milk, you may start with uh, for example, milk biscuits. In this situation, you use a biscuit where milk has been transformed by, uh, very, by heating at high temperature so that the tolerance will be quite good in many children. If there is a good tolerance of this biscuit, then you can go to less good uh, products such as muffins, for example, if you do not have any problem with muffin, then you can go, for example, to pizza. In the pizza, you've got cheese, which has been heated, but less than, for example, in muffins or in biscuits. And if it is okay with the pizza, then you can go to fermented milk, such as yogurt. And finally, you can go to raw milk. So this milk ladder is very useful in helping the parents monitor exactly the kind of product they can use to help the child go back to a normal diet. So finally, I would like to underline some important points, at least in my mind. Cow's milk allergy is a frequent disorder. It is important to say that it may occur in breastfed infants and the treatment is very easy, removing cow's milk from the diet of the mother. Milk allergy has many clinical patterns. It may impair growth. It needs an elimination diet. It needs the use of adapted formulas. And uh, these formulas help prevent any nutritional deficiency. This is why the role of nutrition companies is very important in this disorder. And cow's milk allergy also needs an accurate follow-up in order to help the child go back to a normal diet as soon as possible. It is very important not to keep the child under elimination diet if this elimination diet is not anymore needed. Thank you for listening to this presentation.